I like this candle. We are reminded that though we are unable to join with one another in our churches, uh, God is with us. No matter where we are, whether it's in our lounge, our dining rooms, our kitchens, uh, he is with us. So as I light this candle, we are reminded that Christ is the light of the world. Chris, can I ask you now to, to lead us in our hymn, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds. Thank you for leading us in that beautiful hymn. So today we celebrate the baptism of Jesus. And uh, as you know, uh, we only just celebrated Christmas. Uh, the three wise men arrived on the 6th of January uh, to give their gifts to the king. And today he's grown up. Uh, he's now 30 years old as we remember him at, at his baptism. So we come to God in worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. Grace and peace be with you. And keep you in the love of Christ. Father of glory. Holy and eternal. Look upon us now in power and mercy. May your strength overcome our weakness, your radiance transform our blindness, and your spirit draw us to that love shown and offered to us by your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus, mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, Word made flesh and splendour of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So we take a moment to come to God to 
Ask him for forgiveness where we may have sinned or grieved him. And we take a moment just to offer those words to him of sorrow and then we seek his forgiveness. We say together, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we don't need to stand for the Gloria at home, but we will say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The collect for today, the baptism of Jesus. Let us pray. The Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that we who are born again by water and the Spirit may rejoice to be called your children through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, be God. to God. The song is Psalm 96, which I've just lost. Psalm 29, Keith. Sorry, I've, my laptop is left. You found it, Keith? No, I can't find it. I'm sorry. Um, I have it. I'm sorry. I do apologise. The uh, response is, may the Lord bless his people with peace. May the Lord bless his people bless his with peace. peace. Ascribe to the Lord, you powers of heaven. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. May the Lord, Lord bless, his, bless people his people with peace. With peace. I'm sorry, it's gone again. I've lost it. Have you passing? Keith, do you want Graham to, to read the response? Yes, please. If he's got the text, Graham, yeah, would you please? I'm sorry. I've got the text, Keith. Don't worry, yeah. I've got the text. Thank you. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. 
The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty in operation. The voice of the Lord is a glorious voice. May the Lord bless his people with peace. The Lord sits enthroned above the water flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. May the Lord bless his people with peace. The second reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. When Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Hallelujah. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the River Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mm. Well, good morning, everyone. It's lovely to be with you again. I trust that uh, you're all keeping well and safe in these difficult times. And it was good just looking at the, um, the, the images before we started the service that Rona is looking rather better this week. Hope you are, Rona. Well, at the moment, we are in the church year and we're in the season of uh, Epiphany. At Christmas, of course, we are concerned with the birth of Jesus and we give our full attention to the gospel stories of his birth. The emphasis is very much upon his coming. Now, Epiphany follows on naturally from Christmas, for in this season we are concerned with the revelation or the manifestation of Jesus. It's the gradual unfolding of the truth about him, the revealing of who he is and his true nature. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the process started, of course, last Wednesday, the Feast of the Epiphany, when we thought about the visit of the wise men who bowed before him as their king. This week we are thinking about the baptism of Jesus. And the story actually starts with John the Baptist. Now John had a simple but demanding message for the people of Israel. He called the people to repent of their sins and to be baptized in the River Jordan. He had no little success for crowds of people came out to John to be baptized by him. And that brings us on to Jesus, of course. For one day, Jesus himself is one of the crowd and comes to John for baptism. And this seems to us perhaps to be a bit of a puzzle. 
for the baptism that John administered to the people of Israel was as a sign of repentance. They came to John, they confessed their sins to him, and he baptized them in the River Jordan, a sign that spoke eloquently of cleansing, cleansing from the sin that they had confessed. But what about Jesus? It's always been our Christian understanding, our conviction that Jesus was without sin, that of all people, he is the one without sin. As the writer to the Hebrews tells us, Jesus was one who was tempted in every way that we are, but did not sin. It puzzled John too, for St. Matthew tells us in his gospel, this, John said, I ought to be baptized by you, yet you have come to me. And he tried to dissuade Jesus from being baptized. So why did he need to be baptized? For he was without sin. Well, Christian thinkers have pondered this one from the very earliest of times, and there is really no definitive answer. There is perhaps, though, a clue in St. Paul's second letter to the Christians at Corinth. We find there these words. God made him that was without sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Now, these are strange and difficult words for us to get our heads around. But they seem to be saying something like this, that although Jesus himself was without sin, yet he became as though he were a sinner. Not actually a sinner, of course, but as though he were one. It was though he were a sinner in that somehow he took the sin of the world into himself. As a sponge absorbs water, so it is as though Jesus absorbed the sin of the world into his being. And on the cross, that sin was dealt with. For when Jesus died, the sin that he had taken into himself died with him. And in that way, all people could be made right with God and brought close to him. And so although his baptism cannot mean that Jesus himself had been a sinner and had repented of that sin, it does mean this, that Jesus identified himself fully with sinful humanity. As we are born, so Jesus was born. As we are human, so Jesus was human. As we are tempted, so Jesus was tempted. As we die, so Jesus died. And as we are baptized, when we come to Christ, so Jesus was baptized. Jesus was in every way as we are, except for sin. And this seems to be an essential part of how salvation is brought about. For some reason that only God himself knows, our forgiveness can only be affected from below. What do I mean by that? Well, this, simply this, as human nature is responsible for disobedience and sin, so it is through that same human nature that redemption, that salvation must come. And so God himself in Jesus came to be born as a human being, to take upon himself a human nature and to die as we all die to do something about our sin. Though forgiveness comes from above, it is affected from below. And so in submitting to the baptism at the hands of John that day long ago, Jesus is saying this, look, I am with you. I stand beside you, even to the point of identifying with your sin. Your sin becomes my sin and I will deal with it. And so the baptism of Jesus signifies this, that Jesus stands alongside us and ident identifies with us completely, even to the extent of our sinfulness. But of course, something else, something rather strange and momentous happened at the baptism of Jesus. We read these words, when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opened and the spirits descended upon him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are beloved, my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. Of course, this may all, all only be a figure of speech, a picture that Mark paints and the other, other gospel writers, writers for that matter, a picture that they paint to try and describe the indescribable, something about Jesus. Although, of course, St. Luke in his gospel does tell us that the dove descended in bodily form, whatever it is, this event is important for it describes the descent of the holy spirit upon jesus to bring to him god's power from on high to equip him to strengthen him for the hard road that lay ahead of him but there is yet more we have this picture of heaven being opened 
and in olden times that portrayed that God is about to say something important. You are my son, he said, with you I am well pleased. So what can all of this mean? It's obviously very important. It must mean, I think, that Jesus is no mere human being. He must not and cannot be mistaken for any ordinary man. Jesus is human to be sure, but he is more than merely human. He is special for he is divine too. Here is someone upon whom the spirit of God rests. Here is no mere man, but rather the very son of God. And so the spirit falling upon Jesus and the voice from heaven together tell us something about who Jesus is. It's an epiphany, a revelation of his being. He is no less than God's son sharing the divine nature. And of course, that brings us back to where we started for in this season of epiphany, we are concerned with the revelation of Christ. The baptism, the descent of the spirit, the voice of God all combine to reveal to us just who Jesus is. Yes, he is a man who, though without sin, submits to the baptism of John to fully identify with his fellow human beings, but he is more than that. He is no less than the Son of God, come to bring God's salvation to this sinful world. It's an epiphany, a revelation, telling us who Jesus is. Just one final thought to finish with. If epiphany is to do with the revelation of the truth about Christ, how is that truth about Christ revealed today, some 2,000 years after the event? Yes, there is the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, in which we can read all the stories that tell us about Jesus. But in truth, not many people read them today. And so Christ is primarily, primarily revealed through his people, through you and through me. St. Paul writes to the Christians at Corinth, we are Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. The revealing of Christ was not a one-off event long ago. Christ is revealed today and it is our responsibility as his ambassadors today to reveal the truth about Christ through our words, through our actions and through our lives. So just take this thought with you this morning that you also are an epiphany. You are a revelation to the world of the truth about Jesus. It is for us to make him known. Well, let us all seek to be faithful to this high and demanding calling. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, Alan, so much for that. Uh, some great, great insights and a, a challenge as well for us believers to, to follow in the footsteps of Jesus and that reminder that he was one who stood with us. So thank you for that word. So we will now affirm our faith in the one who came to earth, the one who came to take on sin for us so that we can have eternal life. We say the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Can you now lead us in our prayers of intercession? Everlasting God, as we come together this morning, though in our own homes, we focus on the baptism of our Lord. Let us remember our own baptisms and our calling to be Christians. May we be filled with such love for you and for all who we meet along our journey. May we walk in your way, live our lives for you, and be mindful of your presence day by day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the whole family of your church, for your church here in Wales, for John, our Archbishop, Cherry, our Bishop, Sue and Wendy, our priests, and for all clergy and laity who work for the furtherance of your kingdom in this ministry area, diocese and principality. We ask your continued blessing on Bishop Charles and all our brothers and sisters in the diocese of the High Realm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all those countries where there is war or conflict and pray that you will look mercifully upon the sufferings of the peoples involved. We pray for Queen and government and for all world leaders and people of influence. Sharpen their consciences and give them the courage and the will to make wise decisions to meet the needs of all who suffer. We pray especially for the people of the United States of America and for their president and vice president elect, that they may succeed in uniting those of opposing views and bring an end to the bigotry and aggression that has been displayed so much in recent days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those whose skill and knowledge has led to the creation of vaccines to combat the coronavirus, and yet our hopes for an end to the pandemic have been set back by new strains of the virus. As we face an increase in the restrictions placed upon us, we pray for those whose lives are most severely affected. For those who have become infected and are being treated in critical care wards and whose lives may be hanging in the balance. For those working long shifts to care for many more patients than they ever would have been expected to, struggling to perform their duties in uncomfortable and restrictive personal protection apparatus. For our young people who were expecting to return to school, but who are now once again having to cope with learning online. And for families where there are several children at different stages and where the only device for learning might be just a single smartphone. For those whose livelihoods are once again at risk or who have already found themselves without employment. And for those now dependent on family support and food banks. For those who because of the latest restrictions are housebound 
and alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We hmm. raise before you all who are in need, those suffering from other sicknesses of mind, body or spirit, Thinking this morning especially of Annie Coutinard, Coralie Wilson and Joan Edwards. Give them a patient faith in their troubles and the knowledge that you share their sufferings with them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, Lord of unending being, we pray for those whose earthly lives have recently ended, remembering especially Gerald Coles, Christine Evans, David Powell, Brian Harris, and Roland Davis. May they find rest in the eternal joy of heaven, and may all who mourn their passing find comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in a moment of quiet, we bring before you our own needs and for the needs of those known to us personally. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, prayers these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you draw and welcome us, emptied of pride and hungry for your grace, to this your kingdom's feast. Nowhere can we find the food for which our souls cry out. But hear, Lord, at your table, invigorate and nourish us, good Lord, that in and through this bread and wine, your love may meet us and your life complete us in the power and glory of your kingdom. Amen. Thank you, Ken, for uh, leading us in the prayers and uh, certainly the schools. Uh, are under incredible pressure <coughs> and so the NHS as well. So thank you for, for praying for those as well. So we come to the piece where we uh, cannot, uh, as you know, shake hands, but what we can do is wave at one another. So we, we come to this piece where God has made us one in Christ. He set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come. He has given us the spirit to dwell in our hearts. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. So we can all give one another a, a big wave <laughs> for a thumbs up. And uh, we catch up with one another after this uh, this service. And as I say, we can use the chat facility to, to touch base with one another. So we, we move now to the ministry of the sacrament following the ministry of the word. For those who have not joined us uh, Previously, uh, this is uh, one way if you have bread and wine at home, you can join in uh, and to receive the body and blood of Christ. Uh, for others, it is a, a spiritual communion, but the Lord knows where we are at and where we are at home. He is with us as we receive the body and the blood of Christ, whether physically or spiritually. He is with us. So we celebrate together the gifts and the grace of God. We take this bread, we take this wine to follow Christ's example and obey his command. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. When he was baptised by John, he was revealed 
as your beloved son, the one on whom your favor rests. Anointed by your spirit as the Christ, he went forth to do his saving word. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise and grant that by the power of your Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us, his body and his blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gift to us. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup, strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray in our mother tongue. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his sake. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Now as we receive the body and blood of Christ, we will at home please join in the spiritual communion. 
the body of Christ. The blood of Christ. So as we come to the sending out, uh, I will uh, give the notices at the end of this service and, and uh, thank everybody for making this possible. So we come to the sending out praise. Give thanks to the Lord for he is gracious. His love is everlasting. Refreshed by his holy gifts, Lord God, we seek your mercy that by listening faithfully to your only Son and being obedient to the prompting of the Spirit, we may be your children in name and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Generous God, you have fed us at your heavenly table. Kindle us with the fire of your Spirit, that when the Lord comes again, we may shine as lights before him, who is alive and reigns in glory forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May God, who in Christ give us a spring of water, well enough to eternal life, perfect in you the image of his glory, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you this day and all. Amen. We have come to Christ, the living water. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.